Hey guys, I wanted to share with you today a childhood experience I remember when I was pretty young. I think I was going on to four years old uh, and I was still sucking my thumb. And my parents uh, were getting concerned because this is later and you know my teeth are coming out uh, and, and they couldn't get me to stop sucking my thumb. So they put uh, hot pepper sauce, chili sauce on my thumb uh, to dissuade me from sucking my thumb you know so the next time I try and put my thumb in my mouth oh it burned my mouth bad you know uh, and and that was it I never do <laughs> I never tried that again you know and, uh, and I managed uh, to stop sucking my thumb and and the rest is history um, now this is pretty, 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 uh, I don't know, severe parenting uh, skill, I guess. And I'm sure many people would judge this, uh, say that's, that's a bit harsh, that's a bit, I don't know, dangerous, I don't know. Uh, but, but it's one of those things because we may agree with, uh, with our parents uh, when we're young until we grow up and perhaps uh, when we have children as well we we can and we're raising our own children and and uh, and we love them so much and we set rules uh, for them uh, maybe a bit harsh because we love them so much right and and uh, maybe today I'm, I'm glad because uh, my teeth turned out all right and I never needed to to uh, dentures or anything uh, because that usually affects your, your teeth at that age your teeth are coming out and yeah I was thinking on this today uh, because I was uh, reading the Bible uh, in first Corinthians chapter 18 11 it says when I was a child I talked like a child I thought like a child I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I set, a, I set aside childish ways. So yeah, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a subject I learned. Uh, Paul once said to the Corinthians, uh, brothers, I couldn't speak to you as, to, sp as uh, to spiritual, but as to fleshly, as to babies in, in the Messiah. I fed you with milk, not with meat, for you weren't ready. Indeed, not even now are you ready. Uh, you also say this in, uh, in Hebrews, saying everyone who lives on milk is inexperienced in the message of righteousness because he is an infant. But solid food is for the mature, whose perceptions are trained by practice to discern both good and evil. Uh, now it's like this, I'm sharing this. Uh, learning how different it is. Uh, the way you treat a child is not the same way you treat an adult. Uh, you know, when a child uh, says foolish things, at times you, you can overlook that, do you know? Because you understand that they don't know any better. They're just a child and it's uh, okay at their age to, to speak that way, do you know? So you're not too concerned about it and you can overlook it because they're still learning and you still show them love. Uh, and, uh, but when they grow up and they're still uh, displaying the same behavior, it's now an issue, right? It's now an issue where you gotta point it out and you gotta, uh, you gotta be more frank with them. You're not gonna give them milk anymore but you're gonna give them solid food. Uh, so today I was reading the book of uh, Romans and uh, really uh, learning on very hard subjects to take and to listen to. Uh, and, um, and I'm gonna talk about that a bit. Uh, in Romans chapter six, he says, uh, do not let sin rule your body. After all, your body is bound to die, so don't obey its desires or let any part of it become a slave of evil. Give yourself to God as people who have been raised 
from death to life. Make every part of your body a slave that pleases God. Wow. Yeah, and some things are hard to swallow, but I also discover the freedom, you know, uh, of that understanding to my mind, you know. Uh, so it's like, don't let your sin rule your body. After all, your body is bound to die, you know. So don't obey its desires or let any part of it become a slave of evil. So there's this awareness and this thing I heard that uh, you are spirit. You're not this body. Uh, the real you is the spirit inside of you. You are spirit. And oftentimes we think of ourselves as the body or the soul. So the body is the flesh. And the body has uh, uh, desires and lusts and uh, carnality and is ruled by selfish impulses. So it has these appetites. And the soul is the will. You know, the, the soul says, I feel, I feel this way. But the spirit is that part of you breathed in you by God. Is that part of you that comes from God. That is the eternal part of you that returns to God after you die. So this verse helped me realize uh, that if this since this body is bound to die, I shouldn't uh, obey its desires, you know, or let it, or let any part of of it become a slave to evil. But I should give myself to God completely, who has raised me from death to life. In uh, chapter seven, it continues saying, uh, "When we thought only of ourselves, the law made us have sinful desires." It made every part of our bodies into slaves who are doomed to die. But the law no longer rules over us. We are like dead people and it cannot have any power over us. Now we can serve God in a new way by obeying the spirit and not in the old way by obeying the written law. So from this scripture I learned that when you uh, consider yourself as a dead person, sin cannot have power over you. When you acknowledge that you're crucified with Christ, that you're dead in the flesh, the dead don't feel anything. Uh, I take this, if you're somebody who's known suffering in your life, it must make you die to the flesh, you know, so that you're only interested in obeying the spirit of God. Then he says, now we can serve God in a new way by obeying his spirit, not in the old way, by obeying the written law. So it's like, when I was young, uh, I remember my mom used to used to punish me. She, you know, she used to whip me if I did something bad when I was really a kid, you know. Until I came of age, and I still dreaded my mom is gonna beat me. Uh, one day she said to me, "Cause you're not grown, I'm not gonna beat you anymore." Because I reasoned that you're of age that I can speak to and you and you will listen. And I found this really refreshing, being given this trust by my mother, do you know, uh, that she, that we had this, that I could, I could openly come to her and communicate with her and not have her use a whip on me for me to obey her, do you know? And, and it's like this, it is like this, because we come into relationship, fellowship with the Spirit, you know, and God the Father, and Jesus Christ. And, uh, and we can hear His Spirit's voice in us. But it's also that even though my mom has said she's not going to beat me anymore, if I infringe, if I disregard the rules she gives me, the truth of the matter is in the real world, if I break the laws, I can be taken to court and I can be sent to prison, you see? And, but my mom has done everything to teach me in the right way, you know? So it's like that. So we are under the spirit of grace and not under the spirit of, of sin and death and of the law. Uh, and then he continues in chapter 8, saying people who are ruled by their desires think only of themselves. Everyone who is ruled by the Holy Spirit thinks about spiritual things. Now this scripture is really, really helpful for anyone in their fight against sin and corruption that is in our soul. 
So I had this saying that says, if you're not fighting against the darkness, it's becoming a part of you. So you've, you have to be effectively fighting against the dark. And I want to show you and encourage you a way you can do this. Uh, there's uh, another saying that goes, an idle mind is the workshop of the devil. So I find it this way, you know, from this, uh, from this verse. You see, when I was ruled by my own desires, I only thought of myself. But when I'm ruled by the Holy Spirit, I think about spiritual things. So I saw that the more it's either I'm going to serve God or I'm going to serve myself. It's either of the two. It's either I'm serving God or I'm serving myself. And this is a very good question to ask. Even the things that we think we're doing good, uh, it's good to check the motivation of why you're doing it. Are you doing it to serve God? Or are you, or are you doing it in guys, uh, but selfishly, for your own benefit or gain? So when I'm not serving God's purpose, I find myself thinking to do evil. Or let me say, thinking to feed the flesh. So nowadays I make a conscious decision, especially when I feel weak in the flesh, that in fact, I make a conscious decision that I'm going to serve God. It doesn't matter how that looks like, but I'm going to serve God. And one of the ways is identifying the way that the Holy Spirit flows in my life. So it's important to know, uh, first it's important to know God's purpose. Uh, somebody and I keep hearing this uh, especially today uh, in messages I've been listening to and and somebody said it this way that if God meant for us only to be saved the day we got saved he would have taken us to heaven but we're still here and we continue in this battle against against sin and against evil and we keep coming back to him and asking for, for forgiveness. Yet it would have been easier if the day we were saved, God would have just taken us. So we've got to ask the question, why God hasn't yet taken us to heaven? And it's because he has a mission for us to accomplish on this earth. And that is to serve, to serve him, to serve his purpose, to save lives and to bring people to his kingdom. Jesus as well, in John chapter 17, prayed for his disciples. And one time you actually uh, see the way Jesus prayed to his father and he prayed for his disciples saying, asking the father, not that he would take them out of the world, but that he would protect them from evil. So it's very hard to fight against that prayer <laughs> because uh, Jesus' desire was not for us to be taken out of the world, but for us not to be a part of the world, you know. Uh, us to be protected from the evil so we're here representing the kingdom of life in this evil world so there's an assignment for us to accomplish while we have while we're here on earth so it says for the outlook of the flesh is death but the outlook of the spirit is life and peace because the outlook of the flesh is hostile to God for it does not submit to the law of God no, is it able to do so? Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, this person does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is your life because of righteousness. Wow, this is interesting. This is intriguing. So if you... If Christ is in you, your body is dead. Your body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is your life because of righteousness. So the real, so if Christ is in you before we lived in the flesh, but our spirit was dead because we didn't know God, we didn't have God. But when Christ comes into our life, the body is the one that's dead. And we have taken up the life of the Spirit. The Spirit is our life. That's why it says, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. The only way 
you will know peace is is to be spiritually minded then he says moreover if the spirit of the one who raised jesus from the dead lives in you the one who raised christ from the dead will also make your mortal bodies alive through his spirit who lives in you so then brothers and sisters we are under obligation not to the flesh to live according to the flesh for if you live according to the flesh you will die but if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body you will live for all who are led by the spirit of god are the sons of god so there's authority we discover when we're led by the spirit of god uh, that we are the sons of god and everything christ said we can do that power works within us so he says the spirit himself bears witness to our spirit that we are god's children and if children then heirs namely heirs of god and also fellow heirs with christ if indeed we suffer with him so that we may be also may be glorified with him for i consider that our present sufferings cannot be compared to the glory that will be revealed to us so there's something glorious in the things even that god allows us to suffer because he's bringing out that glory in our lives as we die to the flesh we're being made alive to the spirit we're dying to the old selfish ways and becoming more interested to serving god and being led by his spirit and he says for crea- for creation eagerly waits for the revelation the manifestation of the sons of god he says creation itself will be set free from the bondage of decay into the glorious freedom of god's children for we know that the whole creation groans and suffers together until now uh, so to close i wanted to share one last scripture later on in the book of uh romans 8 it says uh it says this verse uh and it's very very empowering as well it says indeed he who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us for us all how will he not also along with him freely give us all things this is really profound when you understand that god is in holding out on us because i find so many times the enemy uses fear he uses the lie of fear and worry anxiety to lead us to compromise to lead us to give in and lower the standard because we're not fully believing that god has got us that God will see us through but here it says how will he not also along with him freely give us all things so God is all for us he says he works all things for the good of those that love him the called according to his purpose so be encouraged uh many thanks